okay, if the kid is born, and obviously it's an obvious thing if it's a lip, when a doctor does an examination, fills them up, there's a hole in them, the palate, uh, what should be done when the kid is born? Because first thing, you have to be fed, is that correct? Right. Um, well, a baby born with a cleft lip um, has a couple of immediate needs. Um, and I see babies born right away with cleft lips. I'm seeing within the first 24 hours because usually the neonatologist or the doctors who take care of babies that are just born um, call me and I make an attempt to get there. And I see the baby and the parents. Um, the immediate needs are that um, feeding is number one. Uh, the baby can't, as you can imagine, get good suction on the mother's nipple or on a bottle. And so there are special um, bottles made available for cleft feeding, and there are um, special techniques that usually the nurses can show the mother how to do it. Um, but that's the most immediate problem, and often for the first 24 to 48 hours, a baby has to have a feeding tube placed till they gain enough strength to um, start eating. So nutrition is the key thing to the kid stable. Okay, um, you know, it's a in the fact you see that, there are concerns there could be other things going wrong in the body too? Well, that's a really good question. Cleft lips and cleft palates are um, the number one birth defect. Now, you might think that hearts, heart deformities were the number one, but cleft lips have a little higher incidence. As a matter of fact, the incidence in, in um, metropolitan areas of the United States is about 1 in 500 to 1 in 700 babies are born with either a cleft lip or a cleft palate. Now, that's a red flag because you should, you immediately have to think of other syndromes or other um, congenital deformities. There are about 250 congenital deformities that are associated with what we call clefting. Um, that means that kids born with um, other, body in, but other body malformations or defects um, are born with also cleft lips. So you have to think of right away that those kids maybe need to have a, a, a sonogram or an ultrasound of their heart to make sure they have no uh, heart defects. Um, you worry about other chromosomal defects. And appropriately, most babies born um, with a cleft lip often see a geneticist. Um, to rule out some other genetic yeah, diseases? To rule out some of the other diseases. Are there any common genetic diseases that are associated with yeah. Well, the most common thing you're going to see is, is heart defect, per se. That there, you have to make sure that there's no um, underlying heart problems. Um, and most neonatologists will pick that up right away. Um, the other also probably check the kidneys, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah I was saying that you, this, the kidneys are a problem, uh, the heart. Um, the most common uh, syndromes you, you're going to see with clefting uh, that are, are other deformities of the face. Um, the one that we think about uh, frequently is a disease called, or a, a syndrome called golden har or hemifacial microsomia. Now that's a situation where babies are born with um, uh, one uh, problem with their ear, um, their ear doesn't develop right, their jaw doesn't develop right, and um, they, they have a little bit of a funny look to them. Another very common one is uh, called velocardial facial syndrome. Um, VCF, and in this instance, it's babies born with a cleft palate, a heart defect, and um, they also have learning disabilities and um, speech problems. And there, we know that we can test for this, um, that they have a chromosome defect in what they call the 22 chromosome, um, and they have what they call a deletion or something. A little thing is missing, and the interesting thing here is that you may see the baby born with a very minor cleft palate, but um, or the baby has, uh, or as the baby begins to talk, they have, they have something a little bit off with their speech. But once you do that chromosome test and it, it's positive for the problem, you immediately have to consider underlying heart defects and you have to consider um, that they're going to have some type of learning defect and also they have. Uh, something a little bit, um, a little bit uh, more sophisticated. They've got an, uh, 
an artery in the back of their throat that could be in the wrong place. The carotid artery could be in the wrong place. And you have to know that because when you do the surgery to correct their speech, you can you have to test to make sure that artery is in, in the right place, which could be a life-threatening problem. So, here's so the whole approach, this would be more than just a oral surgeon or a plastic surgeon. There could be a cardiologist involved, a radio person, speech pathologist involved, uh, pulmonary people. It's a team effort. Correct. Social service would yeah. probably be involved. So the, it's a team that affects what we're going to do with a cleft palate or a cleft lip. Because right. it, it's a gamut of a whole bunch of things. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, 